Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Basili, your orthopedics faculty with Marrow, and it gives me immense honor, pleasure, and you can call it whatever. It's just an amazing feeling here, sitting and talking to the rank one of NEET PG 2025, Dr. Pushin. Congratulations, doctor. I have no words. I mean, just explain how you're feeling right now. Sir, honestly, I feel the same. I don't have any words for this. I have checked my result like 20 times or more, and uh, it's it's just surreal. I never like <laughs> every year we talk to toppers and every year it feels so surreal man congratulations and and, and dr dr pushan is from 2019 batch who finished his internship in Jan uh, march this year right march march 30th. march yeah, amazing man uh, what is your medical college and where are you from i am from uh, sri ramchandra medical uh, bhanja medical college and hospital uh, katta odisha Awesome. Uh, see, I, I do not want to take a lot of your time. I know it's, an, it's, it's a tremendous moment in your life and you want to uh, celebrate it with your family. Just give us a few moments because these are the moments that, you know, will inspire a lot of people to pursue uh, working hard for this exam. So I want to understand when did you truly, truly begin preparing for a NEET PG exam and or, or, or specifically what was that moment where you realized, Kiar, I have to start now, otherwise I will not be able to crack it. So it was uh, mid January of this year for me uh, during uh -huh. my internship. I decided uh, like uh, INICT was in mid uh, May. So I thought I'll target that and then uh, NEET will come along. Right. So, uh, so January this year was the moment you decided I have to do this. And you know, yeah. it's been rough like uh, July. Right? So roughly around six, seven months to do this. But your journey must have started before that. Right. So when was when did you start your journey uh, with Marrow? And uh, what did you do with it? So um, I don't remember the exact, but it's second or third year. I took a marrow subscription and uh, I saw the videos and I went through all the books uh, as the subjects came along. And I also used to do the cube bank. And then uh, that was that progressed naturally as uh, the subjects rolled by. And um, no, when you say it then, progressed naturally, subjects rolled by, can you just give us like, you know, a rough example of what you would have done in say third year of your MBBS? So third year had four subjects. Uh, I would finish the, I would watch the lectures first. I preferred that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then go through uh, the standard books, whichever was uh, followed in my college. And I also, I personally like doing QBanks because it gave me a feel of like questions uh, and clinical uh, like the clinical aspects of medicine and uh, then i also had finished a few final year subjects in my third year and then in final year i did the rest of uh, the subjects so i mean it's safe to say that you said you you got marrow in second year right and you stuck with it yes. till final year was there any particular reason you yes. stuck with marrow with so many platforms out there what made you stick with marrow throughout so firstly all the faculties were great like i lo loved watching the videos and uh, learning from them and uh, then the cube bank was also great uh, no you said you started with your videos and you also watched the cube uh, did the cube yeah. bank now so can you just explain in terms of say you took ent in third year right i think we have lost his uh, internet connection uh, yeah, right. yeah. So are you back? Yeah. So say you started with ENT, right? So you watch yes. the videos for ENT yes. and then what would you do? Uh, I would uh, read Dhingra and oh. like uh, whatever my MB questions used to come, like board questions that I would see. Mm -hmm. And also okay. I would do the cube banks. Okay. So you would watch the videos, go through the textbook and whatever relevant information you wanted from the textbook. And then you would go to the question bank. So that was your... Yes approach uh, what about uh, revision videos and the delta mcq discussion videos you must have found them you must did you find time to watch them towards the end uh, i did not watch everything but uh, some subjects like anatomy i had forgotten anatomy um, like over the years so uh, i watched the revision videos and uh, prepared towards the end but for other subjects like which i had which i thought i had great notes and they I was uh, sure with those notes and I was happy with them. I did not go for the revision videos. So did you make your own notes or did you take the uh, ready-made notes? Yes, uh, I wrote all my notes. 
you wrote all your notes. That's amazing. I mean, this, it's still it's amazing to see people write their notes still. So wonderful. The, the point I'm trying to ask you specifically here is that uh, did you feel that there was uh, more information to be added to the notes once you finished with the question bank, or was the information enough? Um, I added a little bit, like previous uh, previous year questions, especially, and uh, and also like there were some facts that I felt it's related to a PYT. So I added a few, but mostly it was like 95% of the things were already there. So I didn't have to do much. All right. You said that you made your own notes, right? So it must have been a huge amount of information that you have written down in the notes. Yes. How did you concise these notes uh, before the exam for quick revisions? So when I started off in January uh, of this year, uh, what I what I did was I read the notes like uh, fast and then I would uh, do a custom module like of that subject previous year questions and uh, that relevant topic that I was reading. So that would filter out the PYQs for me. And then I would mark those properly so that uh, and mark the other information as this is not as important. And then that helped me filter out the notes. So when you would sit down to revise the notes, you would just revise the areas that you had marked, not everything. Yeah, mainly the parts that I had marked, unless the, something from the other parts came in the GTs and I got it wrong or something like that. Only then I would shift to the main notes, like the other parts. Right. So, so we are half, we are roughly five minutes into this interview, and I want to summarize everything you have said quickly here. You started preparing, or you started using Marrow as a study source from second year of MBBS. You watched the videos, you made your own notes, and you did the question bank. And all of this was very relaxed. There was no rush. You did the subjects that were necessary for the exams those years. But when you came to January this year, you decided to sit down and you know assimilate all the information and revise and give the best attempt for the exam. You doubled down on the notes that you had already prepared, highlighting only the important areas. And when you highlighted these important areas, where did you get the information from? What did you use as a benchmark to highlight these notes? The previous year uh, questions and the custom modules. Yeah, the previous year questions. Basically, I use the uh, previous year tags in the custom mm -hmm. modules. Got it. So previous year topics gave you an idea. Okay, right? These are the areas I need to focus on without wasting a lot of time with the notes. So this is how you concised your notes. And then yes. what about revision? You just revise these uh, concised notes or did you uh, use any other revision videos or Delta MCQ discussion videos? Um, I used revision videos for some subjects that I felt I needed to, uh, mm -hmm. that I felt that uh, I could not like the main notes for too much or like I had lost touch with it because once you read a note, uh, if you don't remember I had written it this way or something, then it does not become that relevant for you. That's what I feel. And right. uh, yeah, for those subjects. And the I question really banks were solved with the subject when you were in that year. What about revising yes. the question bank? Uh, I had reset my question bank at the start of my internship, but I think uh, the 800 something modules and I, I think I had done about 300, 350 or 400 around towards the end. I focused on those topics, which, uh, which were PYTs and I did the Q banks uh, accordingly. Like. Okay. So your notes were highlighted towards the PYTs and PYQs and your question bank was being reviewed again towards the PYTs and PYQs. What about grand tests? When did you start your grand tests? Uh, I start. I'd given one or two sporadically in the uh, second, third year, but mm -hmm. uh, I started giving towards uh, end of 2025, like uh, 2024. So okay. I think maybe I started during November or December. Uh, I'd given one in a month, something mm -hmm. like that. And then when so I you, there must have been a point where you I get a plateau. Right? Uh, once every two weeks. Once, so you started once a month and then moved on to once every two weeks. So while giving these grand tests, na, serially, you must have hit a plateau where your score was stuck. Yeah. I was yeah. stuck very bad actually. I was uh, in the month of May before I gave uh, INICT of May. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, for one and a half months, I, I was getting 130 corrects. Like, was that bad okay. 130 to 140 corrects okay and then after nict it increased a bit and then again i hit a plateau of 150 to 160 that uh, that went on till like july also i think so till that is what july. i want to discuss what 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 changes did you make 
where your score started to improve or we could break away the plateau so i think the first plateau uh, was when i had read things but i wasn't very sure about everything i had already read but not everything was consolidated in my memory that well mm -hmm. that's so i was getting i knew things but i was getting uh, things wrong as well like i was uh, second guessing myself a lot okay and uh, so what what did you do specifically to you know was, overcome that i i went back and like i read whatever i had whatever source i had and i read it properly and also i reviewed the gps properly uh, that's uh -huh. i think one of the uh, best things that helped me to break plateaus was uh, reviewing gps and seeing what topics i am getting wrong or like uh, whether some topic needs a little more of my attention and then did this jump in scores came gradually or was there a sudden jump in scores once you have finished reviewing a few subjects so for me the jump wasn't big but also it wasn't like i went to from 130 to 160 and then i'm back to 130 that never happened to me okay so i would go like i would jumps would be 10 12 questions at max each time and, and you say that this this jump in 10 to 12 marks or the correct questions you owe to two important things one going back to your notes that you had concised revising them and also reviewing the grand test in great detail Right. So, Especially what was your review? Second plateau that came in. Uh huh. That was that needed duty reviewing a lot more. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, this second plateau, uh, you overcame by reviewing the grand grand test in details. I mean, can you tell me what was the difference that you observed while reviewing the grand tests versus revise revising or reviewing your concise version of notes? Um, so, the way I reviewed grand tests. was i would take a notebook and write down everything that i had uh, gotten wrong and also i used to mark questions as guessed correct for whatever i needed new information like i know this answer but i need something around it so i would review those and i would write it down and mm -hmm. if needed i would add it to my notes but i didn't add everything okay i kept so your caution notes in terms yeah. of adding information to your notes but you would had a you had a separate notebook for your grand test information yes yes and you revised this before the exam uh, i re i used to revise it before every gt like if i was giving a gt every fourth or fifth day so just before the gt in that morning or uh, the night before i would just go through it so that uh, i know what i got wrong on last time I, 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 I think this this is this is a very important point that you have shared with the students here now uh, i want to ask you if there is something that you wish you had done differently like you know starting early or reading one particular subject in a particular way or doing questions differently is there something that you regret or you would want to change in your preparation i would i would uh, like there were a lot of things that i uh, that i read a lot initially the way i went about concising it's uh, it's not ideal like it's not given to me right so i had to mm -hmm. take my main notes and i had to mark so it was a little tedious uh, mm -hmm. it took time so maybe if somebody is if i would do it again for uh, then i would take a little less time maybe i would take a little help from other sources as well like the i i understand what you're trying to say is but don't Because you don't you feel that understanding those high yield areas better it comes from the knowledge that you have in the background from the other areas of the subject personally i that is the reason why i didn't uh, shift to revision videos when i uh, had the option to because i felt even if i'm not getting a question correct from say pathology i'm getting it correct from surgery right. or like from some other subject absolutely having a wholesome that knowledge with, uh, that the background is essential yeah and can you say what were the subjects that helped you understand other subjects well when you you know learned them from the regular videos uh i think the final year subjects because they they assimilate all the information like medicine surgery those are the big subjects uh ops guy and even pediatrics uh, since they can uh, they like they are the end result of all the first and second year subjects so they help you revise those as well as you are going on 
Awesome. Awesome. Now, you know, since you are an exclusive Marrow user who has been preparing uh, from Marrow from day one, has been watching the videos, doing the question bank, appearing for the grand test, mock exam, marathons. So your whole preparation has been in and around Marrow. I, I want you to basically guide the new Marrow users who are preparing for this exam. And I want you to take the platform now and give them three advices that you would give yourself if you were to start preparation today. Yes. Um... So I would stick to making my own notes. That's one thing that uh, I think helped me a lot. I remember things that I wrote in this page on this side. So that kind of memory comes with my own notes. And the uh, second was doing QBank when like in my second year, third year, when I didn't have an exam. Because uh, knowing something and solving a question is a little different, uh, I feel. like knowing everything and attend, attempting questions uh, are two different ball games and uh, doing the cue banks over the years because we lose practice for four or five years of questions right when we are doing it in 11th and 12th and now so that kind of helps you doing the cue bank in your uh, college years and then uh, just and another thing that i would say is uh, like believe in yourself i I have a paper chit written in my drawer that says 175 corrects and 20 wrongs. <laughs> I, I I never imagined I would get 175 corrects when I wrote that. So, yeah. You got Just exactly 175 correct. Sorry? You got 175 correct. Uh, I got 179 correct. But that was what I wrote in that paper and I kept it in my tables drawer. That, that, that's 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 your belief manifest. Yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful. So the three takeaways were number one, make your own notes and try to concise them. And number two, start preparing the question bank and solving the questions early because it takes a lot of time uh, to get familiarized and practice. And number three is believing in yourself and having a voracious ap appetite to you know capture this exam. Wonderful. And, and what about the fear of missing out? Because there are so many resources out there uh, that keep coming. You know, shorter versions of preparation. These things that keep on. You know, students kind of sometimes feel apprehensive. What is your advice to them in terms of sticking to the source, uh, one source for preparation? Uh, I think you start with one source. Whatever you can start from, like the uh, very less source or you can start with the main videos the largest source but you have to come to a middle ground right either you have to increase your less uh, notes to higher quantity according to what's needed or you have to trim down uh, so you have to I, find that fine balance yeah and uh, and if you are if you're doing well if you have your gt scores are increasing and you're uh, doing fine, then I don't think you should fall into this FOMO trap because even I have thought that uh, maybe this is better, maybe I should take this app or maybe I should do uh, I should see some videos extra or something like that or even like an addition change happens and you feel maybe I should see the new videos but if you're doing okay I think you don't need to change your resources as much right. So as far as your scores are gradually slowly improving you're on the right path and if it's the right path you just stick with it it's only a matter of time when you'll find your success and a lot of times like we get a plateau yes i'm getting 140 corrects but the way i'm getting that 140 corrects is also different sometimes you just know questions and you're getting them right and sometimes you don't know and you're guessing and you're getting 140 right so i think that also plays a role in uh, judging your preparation, not just the absolute marks. Thanks. Perfect. So it was so nice talking to you, Dr. Pushan. And congratulations once again on behalf of Mayro and all the faculties who have taught you and the technical team behind this wonderful app. We wish you all the best. Congratulations once again. And I'm sure there will be many more success stories uh, beyond this exam for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.